The armies need to know more and more about weather that surrounds this planet is a vital part of the expanded research program of atomic weapons. We all talk about the weather. The Army is doing something about the weather. laboratory and show you a few of the experiments that led us to our outdoor experiments in converting clouds into snow. Using our home freezing unit such as this, we can form super cool clouds just like those in the natural atmosphere by taking a tiny piece of dry ice such as this and scratching it so a few tiny fragments fall into the super cool cloud. Long streaks develop. The particles grow very fast. They grow about a billion fold in volume in a few seconds. Many millions of snow crystals form, and we get the same effect as is produced by dry ice. Dry ice is, is not uh, particularly important as far as the fact that it's CO2 it is primarily important because it's colder than minus 35 degrees centigrade. This is a picture of the first cloud that we seeded back last November. Flying in a small Fairchild plane, and putting dry ice from a small dispenser in the bottom of the plane. And within minutes, saw long streamers of snow falling from the base of the cloud and evaporating into the drier air below. Under many conditions, of course, full-fledged snowstorms will be produced in this way. Nature, at last, has permitted to do a little something about the weather. Using Schaefer Langmuir techniques, the Army Signal Corps and Office of Naval Research began conducting many of these experiments. In 1947, Project Cirrus expanded to test the cloud seeding on a hurricane traveling eastbound 350 miles off the coast of Jacksonville, Florida. They dropped 80 pounds of dry ice into the raging storm, only to realize that the hurricane suddenly changed direction and began traveling back towards the United States. Savannah, Georgia, was hit by record-breaking winds of up to 85 miles per hour. More than 1,500 people were left homeless, and at least two people died. The total damage was reported in the millions of dollars, and the project and its participants were blamed for what happened. On the night of the 15th of August, 1952, the worst flood in British history swept through the tiny seaside village of Lynmouth. 90 million tons of water devastated the area, killing 35 people and leaving over 400 homeless. 40,000 tons of boulders were dragged off the moors, destroying houses and cars. Porters spoke to squadron leader Len Otley. He confirmed that he worked on Project or Operation Cumulus, which was also referred to as Operation Witch Doctor. What's more, in mid-August 1952, Alan Yates, a lecturer at Cranfield School of Aeronautics at the time, was asked to take part in cloud seeding experiments. According to Yates, the artificial rain fell over Lynmouth and washed the village into the sea. Newly declassified documents prove that Project Cumulus was indeed going on the day of the flood that year. Project Skyfire a U.S. forestry research operation concerned with the study of lightning in all of its manifestations. Project Skyfire is aimed at lightning fires in western forest. In detail, uh, the manner in which your uh, work involves you in the uh, dispersion of clouds, which uh, happen to have some effect on, or rather bring about thunderstorms or what have you. Could you tell our audience something about that type of work? Laurie, we're conducting experiments in cloud seeding aimed at determining whether or not uh, weather modification techniques might possibly prevent lightning fires. Uh, we carry this on, work on uh, by seeding clouds with silver iodide nuclei. We disperse silver iodide from specially developed generators located either on the ground or on aircraft. Our experience has been that we can do the best job uh, through aircraft seating. Again, man looks to his own efforts to increase the flow of water. 
Since the 1946 experiments of Dr. Vincent Schaefer, we have known that some clouds can be modified through seeding to yield additional precipitation. In 1961, Congress directed the Bureau of Reclamation to begin a long-range study of cloud seeding with the aim of eventually augmenting the nation's supply of water. The program called Project Skywater continues at many sites throughout the United States. Eventually, if the research program proves successful, the methods learned will become part of our nation's integrated water resources program. In 1962, during the Vietnam War, American forces responded with Operation Ranch Hand. Over the next nine years, spraying an area about the size of Massachusetts with defoliants, the most notorious being Agent Orange. Large swaths of Vietnam were left barren. Enough food to feed 600,000 people for a year has been destroyed. Despite this sudden devastation, U.S. officials said the sprain created no lasting harm. Milton Ross, a special forces advisor near Play Coup, has a son born without the tips of his fingers. North Vietnam charged today that defoliants have produced many instances of miscarriages, congenital defects, and monstrosities among children. The Vietnamese government insisted the cause was Agent Orange. Although that war was long ago, there is lingering anger about the United States' use of a controversial defoliant spread by American aircraft on the jungles there. An epidemic of birth defects, brain damage, and rare cancers still affecting hundreds of thousands of Vietnamese today. According to environmental studies, high levels of dioxin could still be found in the soil in certain areas and had seeped into nearby lakes. Agent Orange was a safe product when it was used in the Vietnam War and it's a safe product today. I got something to say. I want to know how come the fascist pigs have been seeding the clouds. Right. The last hour the and airplanes air. going over yeah. twice with, the, with, all, with all the smoke coming out of them seeding the clouds. And I want to know, you know, why that stuff is going down, man. And why doesn't the media report that stuff to the people, man? I'm telling you what happened. The planes come over an hour and a half and they see all the clouds. People of unknown origin were <laughs> seeding the clouds over the. You know, I don't know what they hope to prove, man. Project Storm Fury assembles a team of highly trained scientists and technicians to fly into mature hurricanes. Scientists working on the project were convinced that they could reduce hurricane devastation using a process called cloud seeding by spraying the thunderclouds inside the hurricane with a chemical called silver iodide. This would become known as the Storm Fury Hypothesis. The seeding planes fly across the eye and into these clouds, seeding the supercooled water droplets from the belt of maximum winds outwards. As the silver iodide turns the supercooled water into ice, the heat released during this process causes the seeded clouds to grow and develop into a new outer eye wall. At that time, the United States Army were in Vietnam. Pierre Saint-Amour was part of the team assembled in a top-secret cloud seeding operation known simply as Project Popeye. In May 1967, as monsoon clouds developed over the Ho Chi Minh Trail, Armand and his team put their new weapon to the test. We jetted the material so that it fell into the growing part of the cloud and uh, it rained very heavily out of it and everybody was convinced with that one experiment that we had done enough. Project Popeye had opened the door to a new and dangerous type of warfare. Some said, if you control the weather, you can control the world. Military planners imagined loading the clouds with radiological, biological, or chemical agents and having them rain on demand. They could attack your enemy using the weather, but deny ever doing so. Allegations were made that cloud seeding had not only made jungle paths impassable, it had also killed thousands of innocent people. But this didn't stop governments from continuing to explore ways of modifying the weather. Sometimes, for highly questionable purposes. And that message calls for new frontiers, new visions. It calls for us taking the steps now that will make us no longer second in space and in science. 
It lays the predicate and the foundation for the development of a weather satellite that will permit man to determine the world's cloud layer and ultimately to control the weather, and he who controls the weather will control the world. It lays the steps that's necessary to provide a nuclear rocket that will produce benefits that are so unlimited that I couldn't tell you about them if I had all that. Time.